Hi folks, I received a request on painting Death Guard miniatures, so I'm going to show you how I would pay the Denzians of the Play God in the traditional green box art. So without any further ado, let's cue the music. To start out with, I'm going to be applying a base coat of Deathworld Forest all over the areas that I want to be green armour. And I've thinned this down with a little bit of water, and at this stage I'm not looking to be neat. We can come in, refine, and anything that goes onto areas that are not armour, we can paint those later. So we just want to focus on getting a nice smooth finish on this. So thin your paint down, take your time, and get a couple of nice thin layers onto this to get a nice smooth finish. With the base coat of Deathworld Forest now dry, we can start to think about defining the shadows of the armour. And to do this, I'm doing a slightly unusual technique, and I'm heavily thinning down Dark Reaper from Games Workshop to almost a glaze consistency, slightly thicker than you think a glaze consistency would be, and start to paint it into those darkest areas and recesses. I'm making sure that this is very thin on the brush, and that if I think I get too stark of an edge or I cover too much area, I rinse off the brush and I go backwards and forwards over the line edge between the Dark Reaper and our base coat and soften out that transition. And what you can also use with this is if you focus and put your initial pigment into that shadow area, rinse off your brush and then you can do a backwards and forwards motion or straight lines to pull that pigment out of the shadows and onto the flat panel and when that dries you could come back in with the second coat and it will really allow you to get a nice interesting and colorful contrasting shadow color to this armor and the trick with this is to look exactly where shadows are going to be where the light's hitting so on this model for example he's got that tabard cloak hanging down the middle and with these older Mark III armors, it's got lots of ridges and places where things be cast in shadow. So that inner side of his leg is going to be cast in shadow. And this bulbous knee is going to have light hitting from the top. So the top of his knee pad is going to be lighter than the bottom. But as it's got that tabard and it's on the inner side of his body, we're going to do much more shadowing on the inner side of that knee than the outer side of that knee. So the outer side of the knee, we're focusing as if it's one shape, and that inner side, we're doing a almost like a, a filter over the inside of the kneecap, whereas on the outside panel, we are doing it more as a brighter green at the top and a shadow in the highlight. And it's just a matter of taking your time and focusing on shadowed areas of the models. I will set this to play in a fast forward notion so that you can see exactly where I'm putting the shadows for the rest of the armour. If you are happy placing shadows in a volumetric highlighting and shadowing nature, you might want to skip along to the next step. If you're not, I'd recommend watching this next minute or so to see exactly where I'm placing these shadows on each armor panel section. I'm doing exactly the same technique as I was for the standard speed, where I'm using this mixture that's thinner than a layer, but thicker than a glaze. Place it into the areas where they're generating shadow and using the wet brush with no paint on it to feather it out into the normal panel. And the reason I am using that consistency is it allows us to do this in one to two passes rather than six to seven that a glaze would. The advantage of this consistency is it allows the technique of glazing a shadow in a volumetric style to be done much faster and something you can do much more feasible at an army painting level if you're gonna have to do this on every single plague marine in your army. If you're doing this for a display piece or a character, you may want to focus on a more glazing technique with your volumetric shadows.
We're nearly done with putting in shadows, I promise. I'm just showing a little bit of footage here where I'm coming in with yet another pass of this dark reaper color to ensure that I have the maximum blue-green contrast that I want on this model and to make sure that I am doing a slightly thicker bit in any of the strong recesses like at the bottom of his kneecap underneath these armor ridges as well so we can really define the panels. For the first armor highlight, we are going to be using some Elysian Green from Games Workshop. With this mix, I have thinned it down a little bit more than normal and I am looking to start to define some of the shapes and highlighting in that xenophile manner. So for example, taking a look at his knee pad. I have done a thin edge highlight to define that edge to give us a nice contrast in the colour and splitting away the shapes. I am then applying this area to about the third of the panel where the light would hit the most. And then once I'm happy with the area that I've covered, I'm taking a clean brush or rinsing off the paint and then I am coming in and feathering away the edge to soften out that transition. In areas such as his foot here, where I think that the area has got too dark and I want to keep some of the vibrancy going. I, might, I have come in with my original base colour and I have done a thin layer to soften out that edge on his toe cap. And here with this leg panel I have done exactly the same thing with this 50-50 mix towards the bottom of the panel. Due to the way he stood the top of that leg was going to be in shadow with the bottom third going to be in highlighting. It'll be the same for this upper panel here. We're going to look where the light is going to hit it the strongest. If the sun is right up ahead of it, that top section is going to be in shadow. And as it, that sun moves further around, it's going to give more light to lower sections of vertical panels and the tops of any rounded surfaces, such as this bit on his chest here. We're going to highlight the top third with this bix and using a wet brush to soften out and feather that transition. If you're not confident with feathering out that transition with thin paint, you can always come back in with your original base colour and do some thin layering again to soften out that transition of colour. And this should be thin enough that you want to do three or four passes with it, covering less area each time till you get a finish that you're happy with. For the rear of his leg, we're going to be looking at putting a reflex highlight in here. And this is to show the light hitting in a straight line through all of these panels. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my mixed colour and I'm picking out the area the light is going to hit the most and going down in some straight vertical line motions to get a solid colour. I'm also highlighting across the bottom edge of each panel to show that there is a overlap in all these panels casting a shadow on them underneath. Another area for us to consider highlights is the collar on the power armor and to do this I am picking some sections where I want to show reflex highlights and I'm painting in these small horizontal bands where I'm going to have my light be the strongest. I'm then feathering that out with a wet brush so that I get a nice smooth transition between the colours. You might want to come back in with your base colour to enhance this transition. I'm then using the edge of my brush to edge highlight both sides of this collar rim on the power armour to really help sell this non-metallic style look. And these placements aren't necessarily set in stone. You can place these wherever you want. I tend to do the areas which aren't going to be cast in shadow by the power pack to really show those brightest spots. Once you are happy with that highlight, the power armor should look something like this. For the last green highlight on the armor, we're going to be using Ogreen Camo from Games Workshop. 
and I've thinned this down to the usual layer consistency as we want to make sure this flows nicely off the brush. And I'll be coming in and doing what I like to refer as the Zenithal Edge Highlight. This differs from a Games Workshop Heavy Metal style edge highlight, as with this edge highlight we are only going to be focusing on the sides that light would actually hit. Games Workshop love to have every single edge highlighted, even if it's on the bottom of the panel and light wouldn't hit it, and to me that seems a bit odd. And if we want to push this fake glossy surface or more non-metallic blending style, then the Zenithal Edge Highlight is really key on this. Now I've taken a thin brush that I feel like I have a lot of control with, and I'm going around and edge highlighting all the sharp raised upper edges of the panels where light would hit. If the edge is in shadow, I'm not going to hit that edge, as the light wouldn't naturally hit it. So this is focusing on this collar here, we're focusing on the inside and the outside rim, and focusing on the cross piece at the end where it starts to do that little curve down. And where I've done the more blocks of colour, I'm going to do a reflex line down the middle of it. And this is going to really aid in giving me that nice transitional, almost non-metallic metal style effect. With this colour, I will be also focusing on all of the rivet details and all of the potholes and pits in his armour. And with this colour, I'm going to be highlighting the underside to really emphasise the depth and shadow that has been sculpted. And I'm going to be very careful and highlight down the middle of his knee pad, down the ridge on the front of his leg, across his toe, and really start to define some of these panels. And if you want, and if you feel that this contrast is too stark between the previous highlights you've done, you can apply a little bit of the Ogryn Camo across the top of these rounded surfaces, wash your brush off, and then with a wet tip, feather out the transition so you get that nice soft edge, so you get a transition on the soft curved area and that hard line on the edge of the panel. And I'm going to speed up this footage so you can see all of the areas and where I place these highlights a little bit faster than having to sit through this entire long clip. If you are comfortable, once again, with applying these little dot highlights, scratches and reflex edge highlights, then you may want to skip on to the next step. If you are less sure, I have set this to go at two times the speed that I painted this, and this will sit for a minute or so as I go through the highlight placements on this power armor.
Once that Ogryn Cano highlight is applied, the model should look something like this. Now don't be afraid to come back in with any of your previous colours and glaze in that area if you think the contrast is too stark. The final step of painting this armour might actually be my favourite step in painting Death Karma entirely, and that is doing all the rusty effects. And to do this, I have heavily thinned down some Mornfang Brown. It is very much a wash consistency. And with this, I'm taking a thin brush to make sure that I have lots of control, and I'm painting it into all the areas where water would collect. Because that is what rust is. Rust is the oxidation of the armour where water has started to corrode the metal. And so it doesn't make sense for rust to be on flat planes unless that's where water's gathered. And this power armor has a lot of curved surfaces. So it's going to sit under ridges. It's going to sit in recesses. And any pits and holes in the armor are going to be filled with this rust. And the reason I'm using this paint is it's going to maintain the same level of finish. It's going to have that same matte, slightly satin effect that the rest of the Games Workshop paints have and it's not going to look strange and it's going to allow us to have much more control than if we were using something like Typhus Corrosion or Dirty Down Rust. And this allows us to add that vibrancy which products like Dirty Down Rust tend to lose over darker or non-metallic surfaces. So with this, it's just a matter of going through and applying in all the areas that you think water would collect. And with this, and any weathering technique, I always recommend doing a little, seeing how it looks, and then going back to it. We've worked really hard on doing this fake glossy non-metallic power armor style, and it would be a shame to cover it all up with this weathered effect. You might want to do that, but I would recommend being sparing and then coming back and doing a second pass to really get the finish that you want and not feel annoyed that you've covered up all of the lovely work that you've done over the previous steps. And with that dry, the power armor of this Death Guard Space Marine is now complete, starting to look very sickly and very much a servant of the play god. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching and I hope you learned something along the way, or at least found something interesting to improve or try something different with your painting techniques. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing? It's free of charge, it helps me out, and you get further updates in your YouTube feed on videos just like this one. So, until next time folks.